Clear examples for those following the Lord. Number one, the encouragement of God. And that's where we look in uh, Joshua chapter 1. That's what all these references are from. I want to show you how much God set them up for success. And the whole time that I'm sharing the book of Joshua, I hope you're seeing if they were set up for success, how much more are we set up for success? If they had God fighting for them, how much more do we have God fighting for us? Those people were living without the written word of God as their guide. They did not carry around a pocket testament or one in their purse. They did not have it playing on the tapes in their car. They had occasional prophets coming through. And they had no copy of the word of God. Nobody back then had a copy. It was kept in the tabernacle. It was kept by the priests. They didn't get their own copy. They heard it now and then. You and I have it almost omnipresent in our life. And the one that wrote it has moved in. My goodness, we have everything. And yet some of us don't live as righteous and holy a life as those Old Testament saints that did not have the sealing, anointing, ever-dwelling, indwelling Holy Spirit. Remember how David said after his sin, Oh, don't take your spirit away. What does that mean? God took his spirit away from people that were his. He says, don't do it to me. Don't take it away. You and I, let's look at the clear examples. Chapter 1, verse 2 of, of Joshua. He commissioned them. This is what he said. I send you out in the battle. And this is what the second verse says. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, into the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. You, go, I am sending you. Now, you know, you know what was right on the other side of the Jordan? And it's still there today. Rises up way above the flat plain. It's a big mound. And it was a looming, looming huge city built to the worship of the moon god and its name was Jericho. It was just ominous sitting there parked right on the Jordan River. Massive. Jericho. 8,000 years of continuous inhabitation according to the archaeologists. That's amazing. This place had had quite a reputation. And that means as soon as they sloshed across the river they thought, they didn't know God was going to dry it up. As soon as they went across that river they're going to be face to face with those walls towering straight up with defenses and everything else and a people that were ready and they were armed for war. You know what God said? He says, hey, I'm commissioning you. You're not going on your own. I'm sending you. Commanded. Look at verse 3. Every place the sole of your foot will tread, I have given to you as I said to Moses. He says, get going. I'm commanding you. And he says, I want you to conquer the land. I want you to get your feet in there and take it over for me. He said, it's my land. And I'm giving it to you. Now, God says, I, I have bought you with a price. You belong to me. I want you to mortify your members which are upon the earth. Anger, wrath, malice, lasciviousness, fornication, evil speaking. He said, I want you to mortify those. Take them one at a time and attack them just like Joshua did. Systematically, do your northern campaign. Do your southern campaign. Wipe out the Jerichos of our life. That's what he's telling us. Then he says, he confided in them. Look at verse 5. Well, I'll read 4. From the wilderness and this Lebanon as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites and the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. I thought that was a New Testament verse. Remember? I'll never leave you or forsake you. The Lord promised. You know what? He, he confided his very presence. He says, I, I'm going to tell you something, Joshua. If you'll just walk in obedience to me, everywhere your foot touches, you're going to conquer. And I'm going to always be with you. I'm going to fight for you. I'm going to give you the whole thing. The Lord Jesus Christ said, All power is given to me in heaven and earth. Go therefore into all the world and make disciples of Every creature, every person, Matthew 28, 18, 19, and 20, and lo, what? I am with you always to the end. Same promises, only I think they're even better for us. Well, that's uh, the encouragement of God. Secondly, look in chapter 2. I want to, if you've never underlined this, this is really neat too. In verse uh, 18, this is uh, Rahab the what? Everyone remembers her as Rahab the, how would you like that? To be remembered forever as Rahab the How do you like that? That's amazing. And you know what? She is one of the foremothers of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Now that, that gives me great hope. Doesn't it give you great hope? I mean, if someone who, I mean, with that tag on their name, but look at what, what's the redeeming, verse 18 of chapter 2. Unless when we come into the land, you bind this line of scarlet cord in the window through which you let us down. And unless you bring your father and your mother and brothers and all your father's household in your own house, it'll be that you'll get destroyed if you don't do that. This is called, this is a classic verse, this is called the scarlet cord of redemption. This, why wasn't that cord brown? Why didn't you say, hang a blue cord out the window? Or hang a green cord out the window? What's the scarlet stuff for? Well, of course, without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. The only reason Rahab got saved was not because she kept the spies. It's not because she was a harlot. It's not because she was on the wall and and had a good location where the wall wouldn't fall down. No, no. It's because of grace. And grace is because of the shed blood of Christ. Now, did you know up until modern times, every single ship in the British Navy, which, remember the sun never sat upon the empire. At one time, the British Empire was all the way around the the globe. It was the largest empire of all time. It was massive. I mean, they had India, they had Canada, they had here. Remember? Back in the old days, they had all around the world. China, a great portion of it. Did you know that in every single rope, on every single ship of Her Majesty's Navy, there was a red thread through every rope on every ship. So that whenever they cut and retied, they'd see that red line in the center of that rope. Do you know why? It was because England was a Christian nation at one time, very much influenced by the gospel. That's where the Wesleys and Whitfields and the Cramners and the Latimers and, and the Knoxes from the British Isles, that's where Christianity came to America from. And at one time, they had the scarlet cord going through every rope on every ship around this planet to be a silent testimony to every old salt on those ships that the Lord Jesus Christ's blood, if it could cleanse Rahab the harlot into Rahab the saint, could do the same for them. The scarlet cord of redemption is very interesting. I hope that you'll remember that verse when you read Joshua. And be reminded of the fact, without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin.